Hello everyone and welcome to my channel, Cooking with Jesus. My name is Elizabeth. If you are returning, welcome back, good to see you. And if you're new, welcome to my channel. Thank you everyone for taking time to come into our kitchen and cook with Jesus. Okay, so what we are gonna be making today is bone broth. Um, if you look at my channel, I'll have it linked below. There's a recipe on how to make a rotisserie chicken, a whole chicken in a crock pot. And what I did is I shredded the chicken with my hands and this is the skin of my chicken, the bones of my chicken, and all the like weird gross stuff that you don't want to eat of the chicken. I mean, I think it's gross, maybe you don't. And what we're going to do is we are going to put it in another crock pot, a smaller crock pot. So um, the Bible verse we are going to share today is from Revelation 1, 5. And in the Passion, the Passion Translation, it says that Jesus loves us constantly. Let me just look to make sure I said it right. Now to the one who constantly loves us. To the one who constantly loves us. Jesus, God, Holy Spirit, they love us constantly. They loved you before you were created. They loved you um, when you were born. Jesus loved you. Jesus, God, and Holy Spirit loved you when you did awful things. And they loved you when you did great things. Do you know there's nothing you could do to make God love you less? And there's nothing you can do to make God love you more? Because God is love. That's just what he does. And this Bible verse says that he constantly loves us. Constantly. Constantly means always. He doesn't love us and then not. Or love us a little more and a little less. He constantly loves us. Can you just think about that? Now humans can't love constantly. But God can. Can you feel that? How does it feel to be loved constantly by God? Just close your eyes. Picture yourself with Jesus. See him smiling at you. He constantly loves you. Okay, so I'm going to put this in my crock pot. This is a smaller crock pot because that's what works best for this recipe. One thing that I like to do is I like to sometimes picture myself when I did something quote unquote wrong or bad, something that I know wasn't my best. And I picture him loving me during those moments, and oh, it's just so healing. It just brings so much peace and love to my soul. And then I like to picture me doing a really great thing, even though, you know, my greatest is nothing. I'm great because of God. Um, but I do like to picture myself doing my greatest and realizing he loves me. You know, just picture it and going, wow. He loves me just as much right now when I did this good thing as I did back then when I did that bad thing. He loves me. He constantly loves me. He constantly loves you. Constantly. Can you believe it? Can you believe it? The gospel is too good to be true news. And I feel like God's love is that way. It's too good to be true. You love me all the time. I don't have to do anything and you just love me. Maybe some of you had great parents. Can I tell you that I'm so thankful you had great parents and I want to challenge you, God loves you more. And maybe you didn't have great parents. Can I let you know that is not how God loves you. They did their best, we forgive them, everyone does the best they can, nothing against anyone's parents. And I want to let you know that if your parents didn't give you the love you felt you needed, Jesus did, God did, and they have loved you since the beginning of time access their love. Whatever love your parents gave, whether you feel like they're the best parents or the worst parents, God's love is infinitely better and it's God's love that you ultimately need. Parents are called to simply be a picture of God's love. And some do, it, do do it better than others, but remember, parents are not our source of love. God is our source of love. And God loves you. God loves you all the time, since before you were created. Since before you have memories, he constantly loves you. Oh, isn't that so great? Okay, so the final thing that we're going to do is, see this? I'm going to fill it up to water. I'm not going to do it here, but what you do is you just fill it up to the top so that there's um, no, nothing sticking out. So I'm going to fill it to the top with water. 
and then I will put it on the crock pot 24 to 48 hours. I like to do bone broth, so my goal is to try to get it so that the bones are literally falling apart because I like to get the gelatin in there. Uh, there's gelatin in the bones, but you can do it for as long as you want. I have read that if you leave it on for too long, it can become bitter. So what I like to do is after 24 hours, I like to just taste it every couple hours or so and make sure it's not becoming bitter. Um, but yeah, you just need to do whatever tastes best for you. I typically do about 24 to 48 hours. You don't need to take that long if you just want the broth. Um, you know, you could probably do 12 hours. Just, just check and I'm gonna put it on low. I'm gonna put it on low. And uh, I suggest you put yours on low as well. And as I said, sometimes cooking just requires, you know, just following your heart, some common sense, just keep trying it out, keep testing it. And when it's done, um, you just drain it with um, either a cheesecloth or if you've got like a really thin, well, honestly, any strainer, just strain it, all the stuff will come out, you can throw it out, and then what you'll have left is beautiful broth. Mmm, I'm looking forward to making it for my next meal. So thank you so much for Thank you so much for coming onto my channel. And if you liked it, um, can you please hit the thumbs up button, leave me a comment. And if you'd like to join our family, I would love it for you to hit that subscribe button so that you can join whenever I post another recipe. This, these bones I got from a rotisserie chicken crock pot meal that I made. So I will have that video linked. I will also have the taste test for the rotisserie chicken linked. It was really, really yummy. All right, uh, dear Lord, thank you for loving us. We bless this bone broth. We bless our food. I bless every single person who can hear my voice. God, thank you that you love them. I ask that you would give them a deeper revelation of how much you love them. Help them to realize, dear Lord, that this has nothing to do with what they do, and it's all about what you did for us, Jesus, on that cross. How you loved us, how you took on all of our sin, all of our sickness, all of our pain, all of our poverty, and you did it because you loved us, and it's a free gift. There's nothing we can do to make you love us more. There's nothing we can do to make you love us less. No matter how bad that thing was, I'm talking to you, no matter how bad that thing was, doesn't matter. God still loves you because remember, God is love. If you go in the water, you're guaranteed to get wet. If you look to God, you're guaranteed to be loved. And if you don't look to God, you're still being loved. And dear Lord, just thank you that we are a three-part being, spirit, soul, and body. And in our spirit, we are perfect, just like Jesus is perfect. And we know who we are in our spirit by reading those promises in the Bible. Thank you so much, dear Lord. You're a great God and awesome dad in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you again. If you have not become a believer, if you have not believed on Jesus, I welcome you to join the family. There is a salvation prayer in the comments box, so you can just uh, click on it. There'll be a purple cross, and there's a prayer right there that you can pray, you and Jesus. And I'd like to welcome to you to the family. So if you have received Jesus for the first time, prayed that salvation prayer, please put a comment below so I can welcome you to our family and find a, uh, read your Bible and find a Bible-believing Bible church. God bless you all. Have a great day.